Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities. It can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy, the cosmic energy. Did Nikola Tesla really give this amazing interview in the play called Tesla, or Adaptation of an Angel? Also known as Everything is the Light, the lost interview with Nikola Tesla. A mind-boggling article had surfaced a little while back of a lost or intentionally hidden interview with the master of electricity himself, Nikola Tesla. Rumors suggest that the interview is fake, but how do we prove it? Impossible. We now know that the interview comes from the theater play, Tesla, or Adaptation of an Angel, meaning Adaptation of Tesla, by Stephen Peshek, a Serbian playwright. But the real question remains, did Nikola Tesla really conduct such an interview? We are all hungry for more of Nikola Tesla's wisdom on spirituality, and we get a beautiful glimpse of that in this interview. Even if this interview was a fake, it still holds loads of thought-provoking wisdom. The play started as a radio drama in Serbia. It became very popular, it was made into a theater play, and was first performed in Belgrade in 1995. The play was made into a film twice, in 2001 and 2014. Apparently, as an inspiration to Stephen Peshek to write this play, he used the true interview given by scientist Nikola Tesla for the magazine Immortality in his laboratory in Colorado Springs. So without further ado, please enjoy this wonderful interview with the master of electricity, Nikola Tesla. The interview is conducted by journalist John Smith. Journalist Speaks Mr. Tesla, you have gained the glory of a man who got involved in the cosmic processes. Who are you, Mr. Tesla? It's an interesting question, Mr. Smith, and I will try to give you the right answer. They say that you are from the country of Croatia, the area called Leka, rich with trees, rocks, and starry skies. They say that your hometown is named after the flowers of the mountain, and that the house you were born in is next to the forest and the church. Really, everything you said is true. I am proud of my Serbian origin and my Croatian homeland. Futurists say that the 20th century and the 21st century were born in the head of Nikola Tesla. They hold a magnetic field in reverse and sing hymns to the induction motor. His creator was called the hunter who caught the light in his nets from the depths of the earth and the warrior who caught fire from heaven. He is said to be the father of alternating current, which will make physics and chemistry dominate half of the world. The industry will proclaim him as the supreme saint, a banker for the greatest benefactors. In the laboratory of Nikola Tesla, for the first time, an atom has been broken. A weapon has been created that produces seismic vibrations. There, black cosmic rays were discovered. Five races will pray to him in the temple of the future, because he has taught them a great secret, that the elements of Empedocles can be watered with the life forces of the ethers. Yes, these are some of my most important discoveries, yet I am a defeated man. I have not achieved the greatest of my goals. What would that wish be, Mr. Tesla? I wanted to light up the whole Earth. There is enough electricity to create a second sun. 
Light would appear around the equator, like a ring around Saturn. Humanity is not prepared for greatness. In Colorado Springs, I have impregnated the Earth with electricity. We can also water the other energies, such as positive mental energy, found in the music of Bach or Mozart, or in the verses of the great poets. Inside the Earth, there are energies of joy, peace, and love that are expressed, for example, through a flower that grows from the Earth, the food that comes out of it, and everything that makes it the home of man. I've spent years looking for ways that this energy could influence people. The beauty and aroma of roses can be used as medicine, and the sun's rays as food. Life has an infinite number of forms, and the duty of scientists is to find them in all forms of matter. Three things are essential in this regard. All I do is look for them. I know I will not find them, but I will not give them up. What are these things? One problem is food. What energy, stellar, or terrestrial can feed the hungry on earth? With what wine can thirst be watered, so that the people can cheer in their hearts and understand that they are gods? It is another thing to destroy the power of evil and the suffering in which man's life passes. Sometimes they occur as an epidemic in the depths of space. In this century, the disease has spread from Earth to the universe. The third thing is, is there an excess of light in the universe? I discovered a star that according to astronomical and mathematical laws could disappear and still nothing would change. That star is in this galaxy. Its light can be admitted with such density that it fits into a sphere smaller than an apple and at the same time heavier than our solar system. Religions and philosophies teach that man can become the Christ, Buddha, and Zoroaster. What I am trying to prove is revolutionary and almost inaccessible. It is what must be done in the universe so that each living being is born as Christ, Buddha, or Zoroaster. I know that gravity is adverse to everything I have to fly, and my intention is not to make flight devices, aircraft, or missiles, but to teach the individual to regain consciousness of their own wings. I am trying to awaken contain energy in the air. There are major energy sources. What is considered to be empty space is only a manifestation of matter that is not awake. There is no empty space on this planet, nor in the universe. Black holes, of which astronomers speak, are the most powerful sources of energy and life. In the window of your room, at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, on the 33rd floor, the birds arrive every morning. A man must be sensitive to birds. This is because of their wings. The human being once had them real and visible. You have not stopped flying from those distant days in Smillion. I wanted to fly from the roof and I fell. The calculations of children can be mistaken. Remember that the wings of youth want to have everything in life. Have you ever been married? It is not known whether you have affection for love or for some woman. The photos of your youth show that you were a very attractive man. No, I have not. There are two points of view. Either one has much affection or nothing at all. The middle point serves to rejuvenate the human race. Women for certain nourish men and strengthen their vitality and spirit. Being alone does the same to other people. I chose that second path. Your admirers complain that you are attacking the theory of relativity. The strange thing is, your claim that matter has no energy. If everything is imbued with energy, where is it? First was energy and then matter. Mr. Tesla, it's like when you said you were born to your father and not of yourself. Exactly. What about the birth of the universe? The matter is created from the original and eternal energy that we know as light. She's shown in the stars, the planets, the men, and everything on earth, and in the universe appeared. The matter is an expression of infinite forms of light, because the energy is older than it. There are four laws of creation. The first is that the mind cannot conceive or mathematically measure the source of the whole bewildering and dark plot. In that plot fits the whole universe. 
The second law resides in expansive darkness, which is the true nature of light, of the inexplicable, and is transformed into light. The third law is the need for light to become a matter of light. The fourth law is, there is no beginning or end. The three previous laws always take place and creation is eternal. In hostility to the theory of relativity, you go so far that you hold conferences against your creator at your birthday parties. Remember, space is not curved, but the human mind that cannot comprehend infinity and eternity. If relativity has been clearly understood by its creator, he would gain immortality even physically if it pleased him. I am part of a light, and it is music. Light fills my six senses. I see, hear, feel, smell, touch, and think. Thinking about it is my sixth sense. Light particles are written notes. Lightning can be an entire sonata. A thousand lightning balls are a concert. For this concert, I created a ball of lightning that can be heard on the frozen peaks of the Himalayas. About Pythagoras and mathematics, a scientist cannot and should not infringe on these two. Numbers and equations are signs that mark the music of the spheres. If Einstein had heard those sounds, he would not have created the theory of relativity. These sounds are messages directed to the mind about which life has a meaning, that the universe exists in perfect harmony, and its beauty is the cause and effect of creation. This music is the eternal cycle of stellar skies. The smallest star has completed the composition and is also part of the celestial symphony. The heartbeats of men are part of the symphony of the earth. Newton learned that the secret is in geometric arrangement and the movement of the celestial bodies. He acknowledged that the supreme law of harmony exists in the universe. Curved space is chaos. Chaos is not music. Einstein is the messenger of the age of noise and fury. Mr. Tesla, do you hear that music? I hear it all the time. My spiritual ear is as large as the sky we see above us. I raise my natural ear with the radar. According to the theory of relativity, Two parallel lines will meet in infinity. That is why the curvature of Einstein's space will straighten out. Once created, the sounds last forever, for a man can disappear, but it still exists in the silence that is the greatest power of man. I have nothing against Mr. Einstein. He is a very kind person and has done many good things, some of which will become part of the music. I am going to write to him and try to explain that the ether exists and that its particles are what keep the universe in harmony and life in eternity. Tell me please, what conditions does an angel adopt on earth? I have ten of them. I keep a good watchful record. I will document all your words, dear Mr. Tesla. The first requirement is a high awareness of your mission and the work to be done. It must, albeit only vaguely, exist in the first few days. Let us not be falsely modest. The oak knows that it is an oak tree, a shrub beside it in which is a shrub. When I was twelve, I was certain I would reach Niagara Falls. I knew from my childhood that I would get most of my discoveries, although I was not entirely clear. The second condition to adapt is determination. All I could, I finished it. What is the third condition of adjustment, Mr. Tesla? A guide for all the vital and spiritual energies that work. Therefore, the purification of the many effects and needs that man has. I have not lost anything, I just won. So I enjoy every day and night. Write down that Nikola Tesla was a very happy man. The fourth requirement is to adjust the physical set with work. What do you mean by that, Mr. Tesla? First, the maintenance of the whole. The body of a man is a perfect machine. I know my circuit and what is good for it. Food that almost all people eat, to me is harmful and dangerous. Sometimes I visualize cooks of the world being all conspiring against me. Touch my hand. Your hand is cold. Yes, 
the bloodstream can be controlled and many processes in and around us. Why are you scared, young man? Mark Twain wrote The Mysterious Stranger, a wonderful book about Satan, inspired by you. The word Lucifer is more charming. Mr. Twain likes the joke. As a child, I was healed once when I read his books. When we met here and I told him, he was so moved that he cried. We became friends and he often came to my laboratory. He once asked me to show him a machine that vibration causes a feeling of happiness. It was one of those inventions for entertainment, which I sometimes like to do. I warned Mr. Twain not to remain under those vibrations. He ignored it and stayed longer. It ended up being like a rocket, holding his pants, and darted him into the next room. It was really funny, but I tried to keep a serious face. But to adjust the physical circuit, in addition to food, sleep is very important. From a long exhausting work, which requires superhuman effort, after an hour of sleep, I would be completely recovered. I have acquired the ability to manage sleep, fall asleep, and wake up at the designated time. If I do something I do not understand, I force myself to think of it in my dream to find a solution. The fifth condition of adjustment is memory. Perhaps in most people, the brain is the guardian of knowledge about the world and knowledge gained through life. My brain is engaged in things more important than remembering. It is gathering what is required at any given moment, that is, everything around us. You just have to eternalize it. Everything we have once seen, heard, read, and learned accompanies us in the form of particles of light. To me, these particles are obedient and faithful. As a student, I learned from memory Goethe's Faust, my favorite book in German, and now I can recite it wholeheartedly. I held my inventions for years in my head before carrying them out. You often mention the power of visualization. I might have to thank the visualization for everything I've invented. The events of my life and my inventions are real in front of my eyes, like any occurrence or article. In my youth, I was afraid of not knowing what it is, but later I learned to use this power as an exceptional talent and a gift. I nurtured and jealously guarded it. I also did the corrections through visualization in most of my inventions and ended them that way. By visualizing mentally, I solve complex mathematical equations. For that gift I have, I will receive the distinction of the High Lama in Tibet. My sight and hearing are perfect, and I dare say, they are stronger than another's. I hear the thunder 150 kilometers away, and I see colors in the sky that others cannot see. This expansion of vision and hearing I have had since I was a child. Later I developed it consciously. In your youth, you have been seriously ill several times. Is a disease a requirement for adjustment? Yes, it is often the result of overexhaustion or life force, but it is often the purification of the mind and body from the toxins that have accumulated. It is necessary for a man to suffer from time to time. The source of most diseases is in the spirit. Therefore, the spirit can cure almost all diseases. When I was a student, I was sick with anger that ravaged the Lika region. I healed because my father finally allowed me to study technology, which was my life. The illusion for me has not been a disease, but the ability of the mind to penetrate beyond the three dimensions of the earth. I have had illusions all my life, and I have received them like all the other phenomena around us. Once in my childhood, I was walking along the river with my uncle, and he said, From the water, trout appears. I'll throw a stone and cut. And that's what happened. Frightened and surprised, my uncle exclaimed, Vade, retro, setana, meaning go back Satan, or back off. He was an educated person and spoke in Latin. I was in Paris when I saw my mother's death. In the sky, full of light and music, clouds were missing. They were wonderful creatures. One of them had the character of a mother who looked at me with infinite love. As the vision disappeared, I knew my mother had died.
What is the seventh adjustment, Mr. Tesla? Knowledge of how to transform mental and vital energy into what we want and achieve control of all our feelings. Hindus call it Kundalini Yoga. This knowledge can be learned for what is needed many years or can also be acquired by birth. Most of them I have acquired by birth. They are in the closest relationship with sexual energy, which is one of the most widespread in the universe. The woman is the greatest thief of that energy and therefore of spiritual power. I have always known this, and for this reason, I have been alert. From myself, I have created what I wanted, a reflective and spiritual machine. Is there a ninth adjustment, Mr. Tesla? Do your best, any day and any time, not to forget who you are and why we are on earth. There are extraordinary people who are struggling with illness deprivation, or society that hurts them with their stupidity, incomprehension, persecution, and other problems that the country is full. There are many fallen angels on earth. What is the tenth adaptation? It's the most important. Write in the magazine that Mr. Tessa played, and he spent all of his life playing, and he enjoyed it. Mr. Tesla, whether in connections with your conclusions or your work, is this a game? Yes, dear boy. How much I wanted to play with electricity. I always shudder when I hear the story of the Greek who stole the fire. A terrible story about tracks and eagles pecking at his liver. Could it be that Zeus did not have enough lightning and thunder and was damaged by fervor? There is a misunderstanding. Lightning is the most beautiful toy that can be found. Do not forget to highlight in your text that Nikola Tesla was the first man who discovered the rays. Mr. Tesla, are you talking about angels and their adaptation to Earth? I am. It's really the same. You can write the following. Nikola Tesla dared to take upon himself the prerogatives of Indra, Zeus, and Purin. Imagine one of these gods in a black nightgown, with a bowler hat and white cotton gloves, preparing rays, fires, and earthquakes for the elite of New York City. The readers love the humor of our newspaper. It confuses me by saying that their findings have enormous benefits for people, and that at the same time, represent a game. Many will frown. Dear Mr. Smith, the problem is that people take everything very seriously. If they did not, they would be happier and live much longer. A Chinese proverb says that tremendousness reduces life. But for readers of the newspaper, do not frown. Let's go back to the things they consider important. They would love to know your philosophy. Life is a rhythm that must be understood. I feel the rhythm. I let it lead and I consent. It was very nice and gave me the knowledge I have. All that lives is in a deep and wonderful relationship. The man and the stars, the amoebas and the sun, the heart and the circulation of an infinite number of worlds. These ties are unbreakable, but can be tame. Propitiate and begin to create new and different relationships in the world and not violate the old. Knowledge comes from space. Our vision is the perfect set. We have two eyes, the earthly and the spiritual. It is recommended that they become one eye. The universe is alive in all its manifestations, like a thinking animal. The stone is a thinking and sensitive being, such as plants, beasts, and man. A star that shines asks to be seen, and if we were not self-absorbed, we would understand its language and its message. The breath, the eyes, and the ears of the man have to fulfill the breath, the eyes, and the ears of the universe. In hearing this, I seem to be listening to Buddhist texts or words of Taoism. That's right. This means that there is a general knowledge and that there is the truth that man has always possessed. In my feeling and experience, the universe has a single substance and a supreme energy with an infinite number of the manifestations of life. The best thing is that the discovery of one secret nature reveals the other. They cannot be hidden. There are those around us, but we are blind and deaf to them. If we emotionally bind them, they come to us. 
There are a lot of apples, but only one Newton. He needed only one apple that fell in front of him. I ask you a question that could have been established at the beginning of this conversation. What was electricity for you, dear Mr. Tesla? Everything is electricity. First was the light, an endless source from which comes the material and is distributed to all the forms that represent the universe and the earth with all aspects of life. The black is the true face of the light, only we do not see it. It is of notable grace to man and other creatures. Each of its particles has light, thermal, nuclear force, radiation, chemical, mechanical, and energy not yet identified. It has the power to create the Earth with its orbit. It is the authentic lever of Archimedes. Mr. Tesla, you are too biased towards electricity. Electricity I am, or if you prefer, I am the light in the human form. You are electricity too, Mr. Smith, but you do not realize it. Is that why you have the ability to withstand 1 million volt discharges through your body? Imagine a gardener being attacked by herbs. In fact, this would be crazy. The body of a man and the brain are made of a lot of energy. In me, there is most of the electricity. The energy, which is different in each person, is what makes the human, I or soul. For other creatures in their essence, the soul of the plant is the soul of the minerals and animals. Brain function and death are manifested in light. My eyes in youth were black, now they are blue, and with the passage of time, as the tension of the brain becomes stronger, they will become closer to the target. White is the color of the sky. Through my window, one morning came a white dove, to which I fed her. She wanted to tell me that she was dying. Out of her eyes came streams of light. Never in the eyes of any creature had I seen so much light as in those of that dove. The staff in your laboratory speaks of flashes of light, fire and lightning that occur if you are angry or at some risk. It's a psychic discharge, or a warning to be alert. The light has always been on my side. Do you know how I discovered the rotating magnetic field and the induction motor, which made me famous when I was 26? One summer afternoon in Budapest, I saw the sunset with my friend. Thousands of fires circled thousands of flaming colors. I remembered Faust and recited his verses. And then, in a fog, I saw the magnetic field and the induction motor spin. I saw them in the sun. The hotel service is saying that at the time of lightning, you usually isolate yourself in the room and talk to yourself. I speak with lightning and thunder. You speak to them. In what language, Mr. Tesla? Mostly my mother tongue. The language counts with words and sounds, especially in poetry, so it is adequate. The readers of our magazine would be very grateful if you explain that. Sound does not exist only in thunder and lightning. It also exists in the transformation in brightness and color. A color can be heard. The language is of the words, which means that it is the sounds and colors. All thunder and lightning are different and have their names. I call some of them by the names of those who are close in my life or by those whom I admire. In the brightness of the sky and the thunder lives my mother, my sister, my brother Daniel, a poet, Jovan Jovanic, and other people of Serbian history. Names like Ezekiel, Leonardo, Beethoven, Goya, Faraday, Pushkin, and all of the burning fires and tangles of lightning and thunder that do not stop all night bringing the precious rain to the earth. There are lightning and thunder, and they are brighter and more powerful. They return and I recognize them among the thousands. Are science and poetry the same to you? These are the two eyes of a person. William Blake was taught that the universe was born of the imagination, which is maintained and will exist as long as there is one last man on earth. She was the wheel which astronomers were able to collect stars from all galaxies. It is the creative energy identical to the energy of light. For you, the imagination is more real than life itself? It gives light to life. I have fed my thought. 
I have learned to control emotions, dreams, and visions. I have always appreciated how I have nurtured my enthusiasm. All of my life, I have spent a lot of time in ecstasy. That was the source of my happiness. It helped me during all these years to find work, which was enough for the five lives. It is best to do work at night by the stellar light and the close bond that exists. You have said that I am, like all beings, the light. This flatters me, but I confess, I do not quite understand. Why is it necessary to understand, Mr. Smith? Just believe. Everything is light, and one of its rays is the fate of nations. Each nation has its own ray in that great source of light that we see that is the sun. And remember that there is no man that has existed that has not died. They transformed into light, and as such still exists. The secret lies in the fact that the particles of light restore their original state. Is this the resurrection? I prefer to call it the return to a previous energy. Christ and several others knew the secret. I am searching how to preserve human energy. It is forms of light, sometimes straight like heavenly light. I have not looked for it for my own sake, but for the good of all. I believe that my discoveries make people's lives easier and more bearable, and channel them to spirituality and morality. Do you think time can be abolished? Not quite, because the first feature of the energy is that it transforms. It is in perpetual transformation, as clouds of Taoists. However, it is possible to leverage the fact that a man preserves consciousness after the earthly life. In every corner of the universe exists energy of life. One of them is immortality, whose origin is outside of man, waiting for him. The universe is spiritual. We are only half that way. The universe is more moral than we are because we do not know its nature and how to harmonize our lives with it. I am a scientist. Science is perhaps the most convenient way to find the answer to the question that always haunts me, and which my days and nights turn into fire. Note, Tesla stares into the journalist's eyes. What's the matter, Mr. Tesla? How your eyes have brightened. What I wanted to know is, what happens to a shooting star when the sun goes down? Stars fall like dust or seed on this world and other worlds, and the sun is dispersed in our minds, in the lives of many beings, which will be reborn as a new light, or cosmic wind, scattered in infinity. I understand that this needs to be included in the structure of the universe. The thing is, however, that one of these stars, and one of these suns, even the smallest, is preserved. But Mr. Tesla, do you realize that this is necessary and included in the constitution of the world? When a man becomes conscious, his highest goal must be to run towards a shooting star and try to capture it. He must understand that his life was given by this and will be saved. Eventually, it will be possible to catch stars. And what will happen then? The creator is going to laugh, saying, They fall only so that you chase them and take them. Is not all this the opposite of cosmic pain, which you often mention in your writings? And what is the cosmic pain? No, because we are on Earth. It is a disease whose existence the vast majority of people are not aware of, and that originates many other diseases, suffering, misery, evil, wars, and everything else, which makes human life an absurd and horrible condition. This disease cannot be completely cured but consciousness makes it less complicated and dangerous. Every time one of my close and beloved people were injured, I felt the physical pain. This is because our bodies are made from similar material, and our soul is related to unbreakable filaments. The incomprehensible sadness that overwhelms us sometimes means that somewhere, on the other side of the planet, a child or a generous man has died. The whole universe is in certain periods sick of itself and us. The disappearance of a star and the appearance of comets affect us more than we can imagine. The relationships between Earth's creatures are even stronger. Because of our feelings and thoughts, the flower will perfume even more beautifully or fall into silence. We must learn these truths to be healed. The remedy is in our hearts and equally.
In the heart of the animals, we call the universe. 